to share with us their memories with our beloved, dearly beloved Abuna Hanna. Uh, Abuna Mikhail Edward, Sayyidna and the Kerulis, uh, from the Diocese of uh, Los Angeles. Uh, he's here to give us words of consolation. Spirit, Lord God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his grace, his blessing now and ever into the ages of all ages, amen. On behalf of his eminence, Metropolitan Serapian, his grace, Bishop Abraham, the clergy, the servants, the faithful, and all of those who have expressed uh, from the diocese far and abroad, our heartfelt condolences to his grace, Bishop David, the clergy, the family, and all the spiritual children of Abu Yohanna Tadras Girgis, who was known for his faithfulness, for his steadfastness, and for his honest service. Throughout the, the place in which he served, and far and abroad. We thank uh, uh, His Grace uh, Metropolitan uh, Sarabium, and uh, His Grace uh, Bishop uh, Kirillus, and his Grace Bishop Abraham from the Diocese of uh, Los Angeles. Uh, Amina Mikhail Edward has a message from His Grace uh, Bishop uh, Serafim. On behalf of Bishop Serafim, the Bishop of Ohio, Michigan, and Indiana, and all the clergy, the congregations, all the churches in the three states, his uh, grace asked me to apologize to Bishop David that he cannot make it. He just came yesterday from Egypt and to the family. And uh, he shared his prayer and his comfort toward the family. I had a great opportunity to serve with Abuna Yohanna 45 years ago. I learned a lot from him. He is a unique person. Tasuni uh, Samia Rafi and Mark and their family, you consider me part of their family. I learn a lot. Go in peace, pray for us, as well as we'll pray for you. Thank you. Amina, Ali, Amina, Ali, on behalf of His Grace Bishop Yusuf and all the clergy of the Southern Diocese. On behalf of all the congregation, Your Grace, Bishop David, and to all our fathers of New England and New York, especially for Abundantunius, 
Father Anthony, to Rafik Mark, to the whole family, His Grace Bishop Yusuf sends his condolences, and we appreciate all that Abun has done because Abun Hanna's love was not only was extended beyond the diocese here and has blessed us many times in the southern diocese, and we wish everybody in the congregation um, our heart, His Grace's heartfelt condolences, and we thank for this opportunity to be here, and His Grace, of course, sends his condolences that he could not be here, but uh, prays and, and, and asking Abu Hanna to pray for all of us and, and, all of, uh, and everyone here. The eldest son of uh, our beloved father Abu Hanna, Bishop David, Bishop Carolus, uh, Bishop Yusuf, Bishop Basenti, clergy, the deacons, and my fellow brothers and sisters, on behalf of my family, we wish to express our deepest gratitude and heartfelt thanks. I know that you, some of you, a lot of you, have traveled very far to be here today, but all I can say is, besides thank you immensely, how could you not? Uh, we couldn't prevent you. Um, we're here to celebrate the life of our father, St. John. Over the past few days, we've heard that Abuna, he was a man of service. He was a man who prayed the Tazbihah daily and encouraged its regular attendance. God, the only thing I want to say about that is, Dad would say to me and everyone in Tazbihah, if you don't come to the Tazbihah and you don't learn how to speak to God, what are you going to do when you go to heaven? You're going to stand in the sidelines and you can't communicate. He said, don't you want to be on the sea of glass and praise your eternal God? Come Saturday night and come to Tezbeh. Now it's uh, Mark's turn. Mark is the youngest son of Abu Rehama. First of all, thank you all for coming. We're tremendously blessed to be surrounded by so much love and support. I believe it's safe to say that my mom, my brother, and I probably have the largest family on the planet, perhaps even bigger than they were. And uh, no offense to any of the visiting priests, but I have to say, this church and its deacons killed it today. Thank you. So in case you're wondering about my eulogy today, I'm going to talk about my dad in the present tense. And I'm sure many of you are dying to correct me. You like that play on words? I will be speaking to you about dad in the present tense because dad is a, I mean, God is a God of the living and not a God of the dead. So even though dad is no longer living in this fallen and difficult world, He's living with the great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us and no longer feel pain, suffering, financial hardship, loss of loved ones. Dad was ordained a priest when I was four and a half years old. And in order to soften the double blow of becoming a priest and moving the family from Houston to New York City, he bought me a bike, a red bike. I thought it was an even trade. When I was younger, I had a very hard time with everyone calling him Abuna. And I would go to everyone and say, he's not, my, he's not your dad, he's my dad. But they say that you can tell the stature of a man by the legacy he leaves behind. Take a couple seconds and just look to your right and left. Go ahead. Do it. Look to your right. Look to your left. Everyone you are looking at are people that my dad loved. He pastored and he prayed for you all every day. Believe it or not, he prayed every day for each one of you. So I want to share a few things about my dad you may not know. Number one, dad loves animals. All kinds of animals, especially monkeys. 
And growing up, we had a string of cats and dogs running through the house. And, you know, my mom loves animals too. And she, uh, you know, allowed all the animals to run through the house. And the, our animals loved dad because he worked from home, generally. The last one my dad loved is the cat they have right now, Candy. Over the last few months, she was his faithful companion. She would lie in bed when he couldn't get up, and she was always there, waiting for him to come to bed to take a nap in the afternoon or just to go to bed for the evening. Poor thing is sleeping right now on the bed where he lay for many years, hoping he will come back. <coughs> I don't have the heart to tell her. Dad loves chocolate cake. German chocolate cake. And if it was up to him, he'd have it every day. But mom wouldn't let him. And although my dad is not the longest serving priest in America, he was the first priest ordained by His Holiness Pope Shenouda specifically for the lands of immigration. So here's a funny story about that. Pope Shenouda knew me well. So in 1977, the Pope made a visit to the United States to visit some of the churches. So some of you are nodding your heads because you remember this. I know, I see a Bon Antonio Stanio, he's nodding his head. So on the day he was going to leave, all the priests went to Kennedy Airport to see him off. So they're all congregated around Pope Shenouda. He's in the middle, he's very short, and all the priests are around him. And I was, you know, 19, I was nine years old. So I get into the middle of the crowd and I want to see what's going on. And my dad's trying to hold me back and Pope says, it's okay, leave. It. So the Pope is holding his shepherd's staff. So then I walk up and I hold on to it. And my dad's, he's mortified. Pope's like, it's okay. So then, when I feel like the Pope has let go of it, I grab it and I run. <laughs> I am running through Kennedy Airport with the Pope's staff. And my dad is running after me. And after a few minutes, he realizes how ridiculous he looks because he didn't catch me. So the Pope says, don't worry about it, he'll come back. So then I realize nobody's chasing me, it's no longer fun. So I come back, slowly, and of course, you know, my dad's offering his apologies. Two years later, in 1979, we went to Egypt to, vi you know, to visit family, and my dad said, let's go take the blessings of the Pope. So we went to, to visit the Pope, we got inside, the minute the Pope sees me, he says, come here. I knew instantly he remembered pulled my ear so hard. By the way, I still have his staff. Never gave it back. 